Alright guys, welcome back to your fourth tutorial in FL Studio, and as promised, we're going to be going over the step sequencer in a little bit more detail, and that's of course where we make our patterns. And if you can't see it, then go ahead and, like I said in the last video, just click this button at the top and it toggles it to either show or hide on your interface. But anyways, the first thing I want to mention is this, and I know a lot of people watching these videos probably, they might not know how to read music or are not familiar with like, uh, quarter notes or anything like that but if anyone is I want to mention this you can think of this entire step sequencer by default is one whole note so remember a whole note is basically when you count to four in music one two three four one two three four so let me go ahead and play this and count it rock me baby one rock two me, three baby. four one rock two me, three baby. four so if you want to think of it in terms of music, if you're familiar with that, then you can. And you can also think that each of these buttons is a 16th note. So therefore, if we look at the kick channel, that would be quarter notes. So four quarter notes make up a whole note. Simple enough. Now, why am I saying that? I'm saying that because you can count to four in different speeds. So, for example, some person may count one, two, three, four, and that's what they want the tempo of their song to be. But if you're making, you know, kind of a dance song, you're going to want one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So a lot of people ask me, how do I change the tempo or pretty much in, if you don't know what tempo means, it's pretty much the speed of your beat. And it's actually really easy. Up here, you can see tempo. Whenever you click it and slide up, as your tempo increases, your beat's going to become faster. So now it was 130. That's just what we heard. Now let me play it at 170. Rock me, baby. Rock me, baby. Rock me, baby. And now let me slide it down slowly as it's playing. And that's another cool thing. You can actually slide the tempo down as your beat's playing. So you can, you know, uh, just feel the best tempo for your, what, whatever sound you're trying to go for. Rock me, baby. Rock me, baby. Rock me, baby. Rock me, baby. All right, that's sounding kind of weird right now since she's saying rock me, baby. But uh, let's go ahead and slide that back up to 130. And again, we just got this default tempo. Rock me, baby. Rock me, baby. And typically, I'm going to be working in the 100 to 130 range. That's, you know, most common beats. Again, you either want it slow or if you're maybe going for a slow hip hop beat or fast for dance beat, but, you know, whatever sound you're trying to go for. So now the next thing I want to mention is, all right, so this is basically a whole note, but does that mean that anytime we want to make a longer loop, then we need a new pattern? Well, no, it doesn't. If you want this to be longer than a whole note or basically um, a longer loop for, you know, everyday language, what you can do is by default, this is four, four quarter notes. But up here, as you see whenever you hover over it, it says beats per bar for this pattern in the tooltip bar. Now by default, like I said, it's four, but we can go ahead and slide this up to something like eight, and then we have double the space to work with, or basically two uh, whole notes. So I don't need all that space, so I'm just gonna go ahead and slide mine back down to four, and there we go. So now we're back to normal. Now next thing I wanna mention is just a few tips. First of all, sometimes I'm in song mode, and in order to play your pattern, if you want to switch back to that, then you have to go to pattern, play, me, baby. and I know it's not really that big deal, but if you are incredibly lazy like my am, like I am, not the Mayans, they weren't lazy, you can just go ahead and click this play button right here on the step sequencer and check it out. Rock me, baby. So it's going to save you like a millisecond, but you know, we're busy people. We got crap to do. No big deal. And uh, the cool thing is, other than that, is once you click it, it turns into a pause button. So, you know, you don't have to click this, then click up here. Simple enough. So that's one little shortcut. Another one I want to point out is that people are asking, all right, how do I make a different pattern? So, for example, I want to, you know, make this pattern in my final song. So this is this beat. Now, if I want a new pattern, what am I supposed to do? Well, we only got one loop to play with? No. Anytime you want a new pattern, then just go ahead, let me hide that playlist, and click this plus button, and it's going to allow you to make a new pattern. Now, if you don't name it anything, it's going to just be named Pattern 2 if you press Enter, or you can just go ahead and give it like a custom name like Tuna Blaster, 
and press enter and now you have pattern one and tuna blaster so you know if you want to keep the defaults that's fine if you want to name it something like um wub wub i don't know it depends on your sound then that's fine too but as you see whenever you make a new pattern then you get a blank pretty much a melody to work with so let me go ahead and delete this by we know we're in tuna blaster i'm just going to go ahead and press delete okay and then go back to pattern number one and that's the pattern that we've been working on so that is how you create new patterns name them and delete patterns and also how you select different patterns from the drop down and that's probably enough for this tutorial in the next video i'm going to be talking to you guys about whoa what the heck is this little thingy right here this is called the graph editor and it is freaking awesome so check out my next video thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and uh... If you want to follow me on Twitter and Facebook, feel free to do so. So I'm going to go grab a drink, and I'll see you guys in a second.